no veteran, uh, signed up down at the local recruiter at 18 years old, thinking they're going to serve the country and then come out and just, uh, be a citizen of the community and end up in the criminal justice system. It may not be what they thought would happen, but each day in Rochester and Monroe County, New York, veterans of all ages break the law and end up in legal trouble. I'm 29 years old and this is my first time ever in trouble. I don't steal at all. I'm just under the influence, hanging around the wrong people, falling to the wrong crowd, do things you normally wouldn't do. People who work with veterans in Rochester began noticing a trend. Returning soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines with no criminal record getting into trouble with the law for the first time. They wanted to find a way to help. Military men and women, they write a blank check to our society and they go to war and they serve our country and they do things for our country and see things for our country and have to experience things that civilians don't have to. Veterans are a unique population and our community needs to know that they need to be treated uniquely and to be cared for be just by virtue of their service. Good afternoon everyone. Welcome to the Veterans Treatment Court. After discussions about how to help, court officials in Rochester established a separate court, one that would handle only veterans. The legal infrastructure was in place thanks to years of successful drug and mental health treatment courts. An added partnership with the Veterans Outreach Center provided necessary wraparound services. Most of the folks who come into our court will be suffering from either a mental health problem or chemical dependency problem. Without treatment for those issues, they are more likely to reoffend and just stay in the, the loop of crime, jail, release, crime, jail, release. By getting those issues addressed in treatment, that hopefully will break that cycle and they can turn out and uh, turn around and become a more productive member of society. The Rochester court sees all kinds of cases, from violations like loitering and disorderly conduct to misdemeanors like petty theft, up to some felony cases. The goal is recovery, and the path to get there is not easy. We're not talking about giving anybody a break. We're talking about uh, literally taking justice to a new level, and that is making sure that we're serving the people who have served us. Higher courts have recognized the success of treatment courts and have said it's okay for legal systems to give veterans special services and recognition. Rochester's program is voluntary and takes at least 12 months to complete. There are expectations outlined in a contract. The contract should be a part of it so that the expectations are clear. You're going to have more success if you have a contract that's clear, that there's an understanding with the person that comes to the court, um, and that there's something for them to refer to later. Drug screens and counseling sessions are part of the veterans court process since the veterans often have co-occurring substance abuse or mental health issues. Case managers monitor and advocate for the clients. We watch basically every move they make and I track them basically. I try to get as involved in their life as I can. The case managers, attorneys, court workers, and other professionals meet before each court session to discuss every client. There's very important things happening in the everyday life of the veteran. And all of those things are being monitored by their counselors and their case managers. Over the course of the week, that information is assembled. It's brought to me uh, an hour or two before the next court date and the staff assembles to talk about the progress and make sure that the treatment plan that we have in place is working. It's working within the time frame uh, that we want it to work and that there's not any needed modifications or on the other hand if there are we talk about where the failures are, whether change is appropriate and if so what it's going to be and under what circumstances are we going to implement it. A volunteer mentor from the same military branch guides each veteran through the court process. The mentor is not a counselor, but serves a very important role. What we do as mentors is we, we um, monitor uh, what, the, what the vets are doing outside of the court. Uh, we're, like the, we're like the contact between the court, like a liaison between the court and the veteran themselves. I personally believe that it actually helps the judge make better judgments on what he wants to do with the clients. Um, but it also helps the client to know that there's someone personal that they can relate to. Accountability and honesty are keys to veterans court success. Sometimes the progress is slow. Sometimes it's, it's a wearing down process and that uh, I can see the difference between month one and month eight 
uh, but it's been a very slow change. When you see these veterans on day one in the arraignment part, uh, physically, uh, emotionally, the transformation that they receive over the next 12 to 18 months, it is uh, truly 180 degrees and more remarkable than I could put into words. Rochester has found a unique way to incentivize and motivate court clients, publicly recognizing milestones as part of each court session. So the honor roll basically is a process where uh, the client is put on after six to eight consecutive weeks of doing well or reports of doing well and they get put on and um, all the clients want to get on the honor roll. They're like, please put me on, put me on and um, they get put on when the time is right and they have clean screens and they're being honest and they're calling in, attending all their sessions. Thank you. They just love it. I think it, it means the world for the judge to say, good job. The veterans especially, I think because they come from that place where the drill sergeants were saying, do this, do that, and they respond just amazingly when the judge just says, you deserve a pat on the back. You know, they really respect that, and they look up to that. But before any of the treatment can start, someone needs to recognize the offender as a veteran. We've identified um, different points that we um, try to catch the veteran, if you will. Um, obviously, starting at the top, the sooner the better. That doesn't always happen. Referrals often come from other points in the criminal justice system, the jail, defense attorneys, pretrial diversion programs, and judges. But identification can start even earlier, at the arrest. Teaching cops about the Veterans Court concept is key. If you want those early referrals, you're going to have to get the, the law enforcement buy-in. And it's an education process. One of the best ways you can do it is actually see the, the, the standards that are being held. Uh, that's what sells it to law enforcement officers. When you see the court system working, working well, holding people accountable, having systems that work, and then seeing the end product, the graduations, are, are the best selling tool you can have. The extra effort leads to very low recidivism rates, which means success for the veterans. I'm proud of myself. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> Veterans Court helped me a lot. Like, I, don't, I don't think that regular court would have done this. They wouldn't have took the time out to say, okay, hey Ricky, this is what you did, this is what we can do to help you. Just not do it again. I'm very thankful that Veterans Court is here. Like, I don't know where, I, I think I still would have been in jail. I'm still messing up. Had they not given me the opportunity to prove that I'm really not a mess up, I just messed up or got placed in a bad situation or placed myself in a bad situation.